wondered what it would be like to take a chance and live a completely different life, even if it was all pretend. Now for most of us that would just be a dream, but for some, the thrill and excitement of conning people into believing they are someone they are not is too much of a temptation to let go. Hello and welcome to another KYC Lookup video where we bring you AML related content to help you enhance your knowledge in the fight against money laundering. Before diving into today's video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Oh, and don't forget to leave us a comment with any suggested topics you would like us to cover in the future. Now let's see the top 5 biggest con artists in recent history and you won't believe the con artist we picked as the number one. Kicking it off at number 5, Charles Ponzi. Charles Ponzi was born in Italy on March the 3rd 1882. He was known as the Italian swindler who operated in the US and Canada with his money making scheme. He would promise his clients a 50% profit within 45 days, or 100% within 90 days. He would lure them in by buying discounted postal coupons in other countries and redeem them at face value in the US. While his clients thought they were making big bucks, in reality Ponzi was using their investments to pay earlier investments from other investors. Ponzi kept up the scheme for over a year before it all collapsed, costing his investors $20 million. Similar schemes have been replicated today, and even though Charles Ponzi wasn't the first to start this scheme, it was so associated with him that it is now known as the Ponzi scheme. Number 4. David Hampton Hampton was born April 28, 1964 in Buffalo, New York. Hampton started his early con artist career when he and his friend managed to swindle their way into the world famous club Studio 54 by posing as Gregory Peck and Sidney Poitier's sons. Reeling in the limelight of the celebrity treatment they received, Hampton continued on the persona of David Poitier to gain free meals from restaurants and even blagging his way into the homes of celebrities like Melanie Griffith and Calvin Klein. After many years of cons, fraud and burglary, he was ordered to pay restitution to his various victims. When Hampton refused, he was sent to prison for between 18 months to 4 years. The Six Degrees of Separation was inspired by Hampton's life story and on his release from prison gave interviews to the press, gate crashed the producer's party and even forged a campaign of harassment upon the film's director. He then filed a lawsuit of $100 million as copyright infringement of his persona and his life story. This lawsuit was unsuccessful. Number 3. Gilbert Chicli Gilbert Chicli's story is something straight out of a Mission Impossible movie. Picture this. Two men conning the rich and famous out of millions by impersonating a government minister using a silicone mask. As far-fetched as it may seem, it is all true. Shikli and his accomplice were found guilty in a French court of being the masterminds of a big scam which saw three victims parting with a total of 55 million euros. The crime took place within the years 2015 to 2016. Video calls were set up and one man dressed in a suit and the other wearing a silicone mask to impersonate the French minister Jean-Yves Ladrian. It is claimed that the, during these calls, politicians and executives would be asked for financial aid for secret operations. Of course, no such operations existed and the money was pocketed. Both men were found guilty of their crimes, with the accomplice receiving a 7-year prison sentence and a 1 million euro fine, and Shikli being handed down an 11-year sentence and having to pay a 2 million euro fine. Number 2. Robert Hendy Freegard Robert Hendy Freegard was a man with many strings to his bow. Born in the UK in 1971, he was known to be a barman, car salesman, conman and his biggest role was impersonating an MI5 agent. He managed to trick several people into going underground for fear of being assassinated by the IRA. Freeguard met many of his victims in the bars and car dealerships where he worked. Shortly after meeting them, he would reveal his true identity as an MI5, 
special branch or Scotland Yard agent. In a bid to seduce them, he would feed them with tales of his operations and missions. Once he gained their trust, he would ask for money and eventually tell them to cut all ties with their families and carry out loyalty tests like living alone in squalid conditions or tricking them into being beaten to show they were hard enough. As strange as this tale might be, it became even more cruel when he befriends one man and two women, eventually leading the quartet to travel up and down the UK, living in fear of being caught and killed by the IRA. One woman became his lover and over time gave birth to two daughters. When the man's family becomes suspicious, after thousands of pounds have been handed over to Freeguard, the tale unravels and his true identity came to light. Freeguard was sentenced to life in prison in 2005 on two counts of kidnapping, 10 of theft and 8 for deception. In 2007, his kidnapping charge and life sentence was revoked after an appeal and he spent 9 years incarcerated. Frank Abagnale Jr. is one of the most notorious con artists ever to exist. With a career that lasted only six years, from ages 15 to 21, he managed to rack up many different identities including being an airline pilot, a physician, a prison agent and even a lawyer. His first con was at the age of 15. His victim was in fact his father. On being given a credit card and truck to help him to and from his part-time job, Instead of buying gas, he would buy items like tyres and batteries and each time he reached a gas station, he would ask the attendants to buy them from him. Unfortunately, when that scheme failed, Abagnale Sr. had to foot the bill of $3,400, which is the equivalent of $28,394 today. He then moved on to his next con this time writing personal checks on his already overdrawn account. This con could only last so long before he created different aliases for other banks to open more accounts. After this, he developed his skills and moved on to writing out his own checks and printing on the serial numbers. Needing a new career path, Abagnale's next venture was impersonating a Pan Am Airlines pilot. Thinking on his feet, he rang the airline claiming to be a pilot who had lost his uniform and needed one sent to him immediately. This they did and had it delivered to his hotel. As he was starting to go grey early as a teenager, he used this to his advantage and with a fake Federal Aviation Administration pilot licence, took to the skies, fully taking advantage of the free food and accommodation that came along with the job. Eventually, Abagnale was caught in France after a string of fraudulent crimes across 12 different countries. He was sentenced to one year in prison, for which he only served six months. Six months in a Swedish prison and four years in the US, before he was released and offered a job as the country's security consultant. Basking in the awe of such an incredible life, a film was made with Leonardo DiCaprio playing Abagnale and Tom Hanks playing the FBI agent on the case in Catch Me If You Can. Other con artists who didn't make the list but were still notorious in their time were Stephen J. Russell, Susanna Mildred Hill and Ho Lo. So there you have it, the top five biggest con artists in recent history. Tell us in the comments section which other ones should have made the list and why. Thank you for watching the video. And if you made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe to watch more amazing videos.